What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. Today we're going to continue our series on performance tuning by query refactoring alone, right? So no adding indexes and no changing server settings for those times where you can't do those things. And what we're going to look at specifically today is how we can help SQL Server reuse data instead of having to constantly re-query it for different parts of our query. And SQL Server sometimes is able to do this on its own with spool operations, but spool operators don't always end up getting selected by the query optimizer. So here is what you can do to kind of mimic that spooling functionality on your own. So let's start by taking a look at this example query. It's a common table expression where the first expression is querying our DBO badges table, returning rows where the date column uh, has a value that's within January 2010. Now I'm starting this query with a common table expression because this technique that we're gonna look at today, uh, I find that it's commonly used in these nested common table expression queries because of how long they get and how performance kind of worsens the more and more layers you add to them. And so then looking at our subsequent common table expressions, we see that we are basically querying the offsets for different badge names. So what we're trying to do in this next expression is retrieve the 10 rows with the oldest dates where the badge name happens to be popular question. But we're not just retrieving the first top 10 rows, we are offsetting those rows right by 10. So we're really getting rows 11 through 20 that have the oldest date for that badge name. And the next two expressions kind of do the same thing, but instead of searching for popular questions, it's searching for notable questions and stellar questions. You can think of this query as maybe being used in a paginated report where we're not trying to get the top 10 results, but we're trying to get the next set of top 10 results. And the way it's written in this common table expression, right? Logically, it makes it very easy to read this query because we're saying, all right, well, here's our, our, our source our universe of data only this one month January in the year 2010 and then we're calculating we're figuring out these offset rows. The final part of our query just unions all that data together and if we run it and look at the execution plan we'll see something interesting. Contrary to what a lot of people may believe when using common table expressions when starting out with them, SQL Server isn't actually caching that data or staging that data in our uh, first common table expression where we're only selecting the January rows. In fact, we can see SQL Server going out to our clustered index on the badges table three times to retrieve that data over and over again. This is really a missed opportunity where SQL Server could have just filtered the data to only those January rows one time and then reused that data for you know, the subsequent expressions for the subsequent queries we're running, but instead, right, that doesn't happen. We end up doing this clustered index scan three times. So if we take a look at the number of logical reads for this query, we'll see that it's about 150,000. If we were to just run a query against the DBO badges table without any filtering, we'll see that the number of logical reads is about 50,000, which reconfirms our fact that SQL Server needs to rescan our clustered index three times, reading in all those pages to be able to return the results that we asked for of it. So this seems really inefficient. There's gotta be something we can do to improve the performance here. Obviously one thing that would definitely help would be adding a non-clustered index so we get SQL Server seeking directly to the data that it needs, but as part of this video series, right, we're trying to stay away from those kinds of changes. So one thing we can do to get SQL Server to perform this query more efficiently is to kind of stage our data and create our own kind of spool operator that saves our filtered January data into TempDB so that it can be more easily reused. And while a spool operator would do this automatically behind the scenes and use like a work table or something like that to save to TempDB, here we're just gonna define our own temporary table to save the results of that first common table expression directly into that temp table. What this will allow SQL Server to do then is just to reuse this data that's already filtered, right? So it shouldn't be, you know, we'll be able to read those 50,000 pages a single time, but now SQL Server won't have to read them all into memory again, especially if we index this temporary table. And I know I mentioned this video isn't about indexing, but in a, in a lot of cases where you can't add permanent indexes, you usually have the ability to add, you know, temporary objects and indexes on those temporary objects like temp tables. 
And so if we index our temporary table and we load it with data, we can then swap that in to the query with the, the other three queries, right, that get the popular questions, the notable and the stellar questions, and then go ahead and run this query. We'll see now instead of these clustered index scans, we're going directly to our temp table and we're getting index seeks. If we take a look at the logical reads, we'll see that at first we have about 50,000 reads, which is the initial clustered index scan, which is inserting our data into our temp table. But then the rest of the query, the query that's actually doing the select against that temp table, it's only having to do 12 logical reads uh, because now our index, our data is indexed and we're able to seek directly to the rows we need. So SQL Server isn't having to read all these extra pages, right? It's able to do seeks and get only what it needs. So in this case, right, our query went from having about 150,000 logical reads to just about 50,000 logical reads, right? That's a huge performance savings there since we're reducing the number of logical reads by about two thirds. And so that's it, right? At the end of the day, uh, when you do want SQL Server to reuse data and it's not generating a spool operator on its own to be able to reuse the data that it's already read, sometimes you just need to be explicit and set up your own fake spool by creating a temporary table, right, that lives in TempDB. This can obviously cause some problems if all of your queries have to do this because then you're gonna have a too much action going on in TempDB, you might get contention, you might have other issues that stem from it, but for the occasional query where you really have no control or you're in a pinch and you can't wait for permanent objects to be modified, permanent indexes to be added, this technique of staging your data in a temp table works really well. So thanks for tuning in again. I really appreciate you watching. If you're not already a subscriber, please be sure to press that subscribe button so you never miss a weekly video and I'll see you next week. Thanks.